Hi, Paul Johns here from ACT Tech Support UK. Today we're going to be looking at the app ViveWest, the models that are available and the features that are available. There is the app ViveWest 16 channel with 4 terabytes of storage and also the 32 channel app ViveWest Plus with 12 terabytes of storage which can be desktop or rack mounted. Each of these units comes with Windows embedded 7, 64 bit, a Seagate surveillance grade hard disk drive, a three year warranty, and each includes Act Enterprise also. Okay, so let's go through the walkthrough setting up the App ViveQuest. Take the unit out of the box, and then connect the mouse and keyboard to the USB ports at the back of the unit, and then connect the network cable. Also connect the DVI cable for monitor one, and optionally the HDMI cable for monitor two and then connect the power cable. As soon as the unit is powered on, there will be a short boot up followed by the desktop appearing with a password field waiting for the password to be entered to access the software. So just enter the password lowercase admin and then click the login button to open the software. You'll then see the main interface. Up in the top left there is where the cameras will be listed. There is a menu strip along the top the main viewing area in the center and along the top right you can switch the views accordingly using these icons. Okay, now let's scan the network for some cameras. Right click the devices icon and choose device wizard. Then click the next button and then just wait for the network scan to finish and tick the check boxes for the cameras that you'd like to add to the software. Then click next. Great, okay. Now just type a name into the name text box at the top of the window and then choose a PTZ protocol if it's a PTZ camera. Tick the checkbox for the recording to begin recording this camera to the hard drive and then choose a transport type if you have a unicast or multicast network in place. You can choose from stream 1 or 2 for high definition and standard definition and there's also a choice of codecs available such as MJPEG and H.264. Then just click the next button to continue. Once that's completed there's a summary and then you'll be able to choose the portion of the disk drive for each camera. Just move the sliders around like so to allocate different portions of the drive or just tick the auto checkbox in the bottom left to allocate an equal portion to each device. The cameras are then listed under the devices node and they can just be left clicked, hold the left mouse button down, drag them across and release the left mouse button and just drop them into these windows on the right hand side. We can also digital zoom into these uh, video streams just by holding the left mouse button down and drawing a square over the image. We can then use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and also to pan around the image. Once you've created a view, you can save it as a favourite. So just choose the favourites option from the views menu and type the name in for this view. Click the OK button and that is then stored under the favourites icon. You can then clear the screen, go to the favourites icon, expand the list, and drag and drop the new favourites into the window on the right hand side and that will restore the view that was saved earlier. Now let's add some doors to the system. Right click the Act Enterprise device and choose configure then type in the IP address of the Act Enterprise server followed by the username and password connect and OK. Then drag the icon into the window and then you'll see a list of doors on the left hand side and a list of recent access control events on the right hand side. So now we're going to associate cameras with doors we just right click one of the doors and choose associations. Then check the camera that is pointing at the door and then just click close. We can then immediately open the camera just by right clicking on the door and choosing go to live. You can also replay previous access control events by right clicking the entry in the list and choosing go to replay. It's also possible to control the doors from this window just by checking the box and then right clicking the device and choosing lock, unlock, pass or normalize from the menu. 
Now let's look at maps. Drag the maps icon into any blank window and then we'll see a form to fill in to provide a name for the map. So in this case it's the second floor. Then we click the button to open an image file which has the floor plan inside the image file and then we click on open. And then tick the user accounts that are allowed to use this map when they log in, followed by OK. You then see a 3D view of the map that's been imported and you can simply drag and drop the cameras from the camera list onto the floor plan where they belong. You can hover the mouse over these cameras and uh, after a second you will see a live stream from that camera in that area. You can also drag them into any spare window to view them immediately. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and scroll out and also to pan around the floor plan as necessary. There's a settings icon in the bottom right where you can change the contrast just in case the image isn't uh, too clear against the icons and you can also turn off the device names or switch to 2D mode instead of 3D mode if that suits. Now we're going to drag some doors onto the floor plan so we use the Act Enterprise device and we drag the door from the list onto the floor plan into the relevant location and when we right click this icon again we can normalize unlock lock or pass the door from the map. The map will also display any abnormal events on the access control system such as door forced or wrong pin entered in this case. There is an alarm flashing at the top left and then we just simply click on the alarm in the top left to view the event. And we can see there the, the event has appeared and then we choose a view replay and we can see the footage from that event as well. So then just right click the alarm and then choose acknowledge all to clear the alarm list and the map will stop flashing red. You can also right click the event list for the doors, the access control system and choose get user image to verify that the person that has entered it is actually the person that is holding the card. This is the event list, it displays all of the events that are happening on the VMS software and it also includes the access control events such as access denied and from pin entered and so on. And we can use this event list to automate actions in the software. So we can tell the software to keep an eye on this event list and if certain text appears in the event list then to take an action without our intervention. So I just chose tools, extra options and then alarm rules. And then I've clicked on the new button and I'm going to create a rule and I'm going to type a name into the text box, access denied, and then I'm just going to click OK. We then have this blank canvas and what we're going to do now to create this alarm rule is to kind of build up a workflow on this canvas. So we right click an empty space and choose new analyzer. And these analyzers are basically ways of scanning through the event list for certain criteria you can use text or you can use a field category for example and here we're just going to use a text search and in that text search box we will just type in denied so anytime the word denied appears in the event list this rule will be triggered now I'm going to choose another one to uh, logically join that together and I'm just going to look for the word training room so if there's an access denied in the training room, this event will trigger. Then I choose a logic and a logical and. And then I simply join those two boxes into the and by dragging the small circle into the box. Now we need to do the output, which is choosing a new action. And you can see from the list there's quite a lot. There is camera PTZ, which is choose a preset for camera. Camera view will pop up the camera on the screen. Uh, I operation will activate an I.O. device. There is also a notification which will display a message box. There is also play sound so you can choose a WAV file and that will come out of the app by speakers. You can also run a third party software tool or just send an email. Then just join the boxes together. So now we have the rule completed.
We can also actually join on a second or third output at the end, so it's not just a single action, we could do multiple actions as is being displayed here, but I'm just going to choose the one for this demonstration. Okay, so now I'm going to walk over to the Access Control keypad, enter a wrong pin, and you can see that the camera feed has instantly appeared on the screen without user intervention. Now we're going to look at the playback suite. When we open the playback suite, the software scans around the network for other ViQuests that might have recordings available for replay. In this case, there's just the one that I'm using on my desk. You can see there under the server name there are four cameras, and these are the cameras that were added earlier uh, in the video demonstration. And it's just a case of dragging and dropping them in from the left hand side into the windows on the right hand side. Digital Zoom is also available in playback. As you can see there, I just held the mouse button down and drew a square over the area. And the playback area at the bottom indicates the available recordings by showing the screen bar. The timeline shows you the time of day where the recordings have started and finished. And we can use the mouse wheel to scroll forwards or backwards to get finer uh, control over the timeline. We can then hold the left mouse button down and pull the timeline bar to the left or to the right to play back from any particular position on the timeline. The small markers on the green bar indicate an event and in this case they are access control events that have previously been triggered. If I hold the control key and select another window, I can simultaneously view both of those cameras at the same time and this is handy if you have various cameras in one location and you wanted to see that location from different angles. App ViQuest has a feature called IntelliSearch where you can actually go back through the footage and monitor a particular area to see if anything has been moved or anything does move in that area. So I'm just going to draw a box now around the access control panel and you can see here we can change the sensitivity of the detection and we can change the speed that the software scans through the footage from this list. I'm just going to leave all those at the defaults and then I'm going to click scan and then it will stop when that square area has been triggered. And you can see there's a new event there in the small window. I can just left click this and then I can bookmark it by clicking the bookmark button. And then I'm just going to put access denied. And then add. Once that's been bookmarked, we can then call upon that bookmark at any time later on during the replay of the footage. We right click a blank area of the window, we choose tools, and then event list. And now the event list has lots of events in there, so we tick the text box at the top right and then we just type in the words that we're looking for and it will filter down to that one single event. We could then pull in other cameras if we liked and then hold the control key to select them both simultaneously, right click the event and then choose go to time and then the player will jump immediately back to the time of the event. Now we're going to export the footage so we right click a blank area click Tools, and then Export. There are two options available, MPEG-4 and Hard Disk. Hard Disk is a direct copy from the MVR in its raw recorded format with a player executable. We click the Mark button to mark the beginning of the export footage, and then drag the timeline bar along to the end of the footage that we wanted to export. Click the Add Chapter button in the Export window and you can see the two cameras have been added to the export list. Then we click the Export button and simply choose a folder for the files to be copied out to. Click OK and then shortly afterwards the file will be exported to that, that location. You can then browse the hard drive to find that folder. 
click the ACT mini player application and you will see the exported files in the bottom right of the playlist in that application there. Digital Zoom is also available in the ACT mini player. Just hold the mouse over and drag a square and then you can verify individuals, license plates and so on from this export. And if the aspect ratio needs to be corrected, you can change that from the drop down list and then just resize the window itself to fix the aspect ratio. OK, let's have a look at the web browser front end. I'm just going to type in the IP address of the app FireQuest, followed by a colon and 8040, and then pressing the Enter key. We then see the login window. It is administrator by default with a capital A, and then the password is lowercase admin, just the same as logging into the software itself. The web browser will then display four cameras by default, and this is exactly the same really as using the live player. We can choose the views from the top there from a one-way, a four-way and a six-way. We can also click the snapshot button to take a snapshot and then when the pop-up window appears, simply left-click the image and the file will be downloaded. You can change the view simply by choosing these icons and then just drag and drop any camera into the window. There's also an export uh, option available in the web browser. It's very similar to the replay software we were looking at earlier. We just drag and drop the cameras in and then the, the timeline at the bottom, we can use that basically by kicking, clicking on it or dragging the slider to the left or to the right to see the footage to that particular time. There's also a plus and minus button for tablets and a, a left and right icon where we can move the timeline along or you can just use the mouse wheel instead. Once we've found the footage, we can simply click the export icon and then choose a from date and time and the same as well for the to field. And then we click export. The file has then been downloaded. I'm then going to browse to that file and copy it across to the location where I had previously exported the ACT mini player because the ACT mini player is required to play back the SVS files that are exported from the browser. So now I'm just going to open the ACT mini player and that new file has appeared in the playlist for review. Thank you for watching. This has been Paul Johns from ACT Tech Support. Please visit our website www.act.eu for further information.